a cool trick, wasn't it? Hello there, my gorgeous friends on the internet. How are you guys doing? I am back officially. David is back. Uh, got the setup all nice and ready here to go. So expect a lot of videos. But today we're going to do a game in JavaScript, the full project. One of those lovely boring games that nobody actually plays, but we build them for some reason, like tic-tac-toes. So we're going to do a memory game. Here's a quick preview of it. There we go. And yeah, we're gonna learn quite a few things. Um, yeah, let's get started, shall we? Alrighty, let's get going. Where am I? Hold on. Hi. Okay, so for this one, all we have is a folder of images, which is gonna be included in the GitHub down below. So that's all good. That's all cool. And then we just have an empty index.html. You can add the CSS, link it here, and the app.js. That's quite simple. And it's just an empty CSS, just removing the basic styling, and an empty app.js. So you have a few seconds to set this up. I'm going to give you five, four, three, thumbs up, motherfucker. OK, so here we go. Let's go. Um, pull up the reference sheet here that I have on my left. And no, it's not cheating, by the way. Um, Okay, so we're gonna keep it quite simple here in the HTML. We're just gonna add a section and everything pretty much is gonna be generated in the JavaScript. Cause again, we are gonna have those cards, right? And we don't wanna have basically like a div and then have the image here and duplicate this like 16 times. Uh, Cause that's gonna look quite ugly here. So just use JavaScript to generate everything. Um, so all we're gonna have here is, let me, let me pull this up because my camera is doing weird movements. Okay, so all we're gonna have is a section that the whole game is gonna go into, all right? So create that, and then what we're gonna have is, let me pull this up again, okay, perfect. Like that, a section. Above here, we're gonna have a H1 that just displays our lives. Again, this is gonna be customizable, so we're just gonna do lives. And in here, we're going to have a span tag. Uh, we're not going to have anything now here. We're just going to add a class to it. So class of player lives count. That should be fine. Uh, and yeah, that's all the HTML that we need. So what I'm going to do is also open this up in a live server. Doop, doop, doop. I'm going to just copy this and open it in Chrome. Because Safari is not so nice. How do I get the dock open? I need a good tutorial. There we go. Click, click, paste. All right, so this is what we have so far. Perfect. So let's just go to JavaScript here a bit. And what we're gonna do is for here at the beginning, we're just gonna grab a couple of things. So let's do, let's just do grab a couple of things we need. So first of all, I'm just gonna grab the section here document.query selector like that and we're just gonna do section like that all right uh, you're gonna see where we're gonna use this in just a bit for now we're also gonna grab the player lives count so player lives count like that document.query selector and we're just gonna grab the span here all right so this here is this that we're grabbing and we're just going to create a variable. I'm going to set the lives. So player lives equal to six. Now you can do any number you want. Uh, but essentially, we're just adding this variable and linking it to the actual text here. OK, so to do that, link text, link text. We're just going to leave it at that. All we do is player lives count. All right, so we're taking that DOM element. And we just do dot text content and we're gonna set it equal to this variable. So player lives. Like that. Player lives. Okay. So now it should just update. So we have six. Perfect. Now what we need to do is to generate the data. So generate the data that we're gonna use for the cards. So essentially what we need is the images that we're gonna link to them and the name of the cards, okay? So 
the way this is going to look like is it's going to be an array of objects. All right, so we're going to have multiple objects. Um, 16 to be precise. All right, we're doing 16 cards. So I'm going to show you an example here. And I'm just going to copy paste this so it doesn't take up all the time. So it's going to have an image source. And that's going to be equal to dot slash images slash beetles dot png. All right, so we're essentially just getting the the source of these images here. And I think they're all JPEGs, actually, not PNGs. So JPEG, like that, all right? Because uh, what we're going to do is, through JavaScript, we're going to do something like this. Uh, we're going to have an image, and then we can do source and set it equal to that image source from this, OK? Cool. So the way we're actually going to do this is create a function. So I'm going to call it const get data and set it equal to an arrow function like that. And what I want to do here is just add an array of objects like that. So when you don't have curly brackets here after the arrow like that, it's automatically going to return this array for us. So when we actually end up invoking the function, so if we do like const data equal to get data, so we're invoking it here, it's going to be everything is going to be stored in here in this data variable. All right, so I'm just going to copy and paste this, and then you can take a look at it. I'll uh, just paste it here like that and hit save. All right, so const get data, that's the function name. And again, it's just going to return us this array of objects. So image source, it's going to have um, the source and a name. All right, and we do this eight times and then it basically repeats itself so we have two identical ones all right so that's it that's all we need there cool so now what we can do is create another function so we're separating everything nicely so what we need to do is create a function that randomizes all the cards for us so i'm going to call this randomize and what we can do here is again just create a function const randomize like that set it equal to an arrow function like that. And now we can get the data, const card data. So just create a variable and set this equal to the get data. Like that. All right. So we're running this shebang up here. So again, if I console log card data for you now, you're going to see that essentially we just end up having an object. So if I run randomize now, like that. And we take a look in the browser, hit inspect. See, we have an array with 16 objects. So if I refresh this again, there we go. Now the problem with this is now is that it's not actually randomizing anything. We're just getting the object, the, the array of objects. See, so Beatles Blink 182, refresh, Beatles Blink 182. So nothing changes. So what we can do is actually run a little method on this to randomize it every time. So if you ever want to randomize an array, you can run this little thing. You can do card data. All right, so we're getting that array and we can use sort. Now, again, sort is used to sort everything out, <laughs> obviously. But what we can do in here is run an arrow function and add math.random, all right, like that. And we can add a negative 0.5 to it. Now, if we console log this out, I think the music started playing. Let me pause that. Whoops. Okay, there we go. So this is all you need if you want to randomize an array. So if we console log it out now down here, and hit save, let's go back to it. Beatles, Blink-182, refresh. Fleetwood, Pink Floyd, Led Zeppelin, okay? So it does work. Awesome. Hit save. So we got that running as well. Okay, so now what I want to do is actually generate the HTML uh, for the cards. So this, uh, this section might take a bit longer. So let's do a card generator, generator function. So I'm going to call this card 
generator set this equal to an array like that all right we're going to use the curly brackets here so first of all we need to get the data so what i want to do here is actually get a shuffled version of the cards so we can just run the randomize up here um so all we can do all we need to do is to const card data and set it equal to the randomized version of it all right um, and let's do a console log of the card data like that i'm going to remove this console log up here and then do a cards generator let's run this and hit save and we get undefined so why do we get undefined well, this function runs, it invokes, and it finishes, and it returns nothing at the end. So we're left with nothing in card data. So what we need to do is to actually return this new version of card data. Okay? So there we go. So we're running this, we're randomizing it, and returning it. So every time here, we get a new version of it. And there we go. Now it works. Perfect. So now let's actually in here let's generate the html for it so for that we'll just get the section i believe we already have that up here so we can just use that and also let's do let's create a card element here so we can do document dot create element so we're going to create a div here so it goes in parentheses, div, like that. All right, so we have a card, and now the card has two faces to it. So one's white, and one has the picture on it. So we need to do two more. Const face document dot create image, create element, my apologies. So this is gonna have the image. And then we're gonna create the back, which is gonna be white. So we're just gonna leave that as a div. Create element as a div. Okay, perfect. So what else I want to do is add some classes to it. So we can do card class list equal to card. All right. And then what we can do is face class list equal to face and back class list equals to back. All right. So add some classes to each. Lovely. So now what I want to do is also append these elements together because now they're kind of just like floating in space. Um, so we need to use that section here and basically attach the card to it. So the way we do that is uh, go here and say, actually we have a problem right now because we're just generating one card right? But I want to generate 16 of them. So we need basically a loop and add everything in here in a loop. So here where we generate our HTML, we can use that card data, right? Because we have 16 in here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, blah, 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 16. So for each of those, I can do card data dot for each like that. Parentheses. And in here, we're going to have an item. So each individual object here. All right. So the item here gives us access to each individual object. If I just Let me just do a console log here. Item. Hit save. Let's look in Chrome and look at that. So that, that's what you get back here. That's item. The image source and the name of one of the objects. All right. So we're returning all of them. So for each item here, Let's generate a card. So I'm gonna cut this out, add it up in here, and hit save. Okay, cool. And what I also wanna do here is attach the cards to the section. So we actually have something on the screen. So we're gonna grab the section, and we're gonna append child, we're gonna append the card to it. All right, and to the card, we want to append the face and the back of the card. So card append child, we're going to do face 
and card, a pen, child, we're gonna do the back. All right, perfect. So that should do it. Let's see if we get something on the screen. Refresh, if we go here to elements and the inspector body section, look at that, we have a card for each. That's very cool. Awesome, so that works. So we're generating everything in JavaScript right now. Now what I also need to do is add uh, the image source for this here, for the face of the card. So let's just go here, attach the info to the cards. So down here, let's see, we can do card, um, which one is this, face dot source equals to item dot image source. All right, so we're grabbing each face, each image, and we can set the source of that. And what we're setting it to is item.imageSource. So item, that being this, dot image source. So we're ex accessing this property. And look at that, it works. So the cool part is now, since we're using a randomizer on it, every time we refresh, look at that, and actually, shuffles it together. Now, th these are quite huge, so uh, we might just jump into some CSS and get it a bit more organized right now. But yeah, ho hope everything is quite clear so far. Uh, essentially, again, we just have an object here, uh, an array of objects with some image sources. Here, we're just sorting it. And then here, we're just generating some HTML. That's pretty much it and appending it. And that's it. Okay, very cool. Wow, 18 minutes already. That's ridiculous. Uh, let's go to style.css. Make this a bit nice looking. So for the body, I'm gonna grab the body. I'm gonna add a display. Actually, let's grab the section and just add a grid on it for now. So let's do section. We're gonna add a display grid like that, and then we're gonna do grid, template, columns, and we're gonna do repeat, four, eight, rem. And we're gonna do the same for the, the rows. So grid, template, rows, uh, repeat, four, eight, rem. So basically, what this means is we want four rows and four columns with eight rem size. And that's what we should get. It looks terrible, doesn't it? Uh, the images are st still overflowing, so we need to fix that very quickly. So the way we can do that is just grab the face and the back of the card, just add a width of 100% and a height of 100%, and that should do it. There we go, so there's our grid. Perfect. Um, now, let's... Put them in the center so i'm just going to go over to the body and add a height of 100 vh to it i have a little linear gradient that i copied from the internet if you want to add it feel free it's all optional if not just use a uh, any background that you want but this is the one i found and it's quite nice um so all we need to do is add a display flex and just a justify content center and a line item center, and that's gonna drop it perfectly in here in the center. So justify content center, a line item center. And there we go. Now the H1 here is on the left, because every time you add display flex, everything goes horizontally. So to fix that issue, all you need to do is change the direction. So flex direction, just add column rather than row, which is the default. Okay, so if we take a look now, it should be all good. All right, we're gonna finish up the styling and everything in just a bit. Okay, so what I wanna do now is make the cards so the white shows up and when it's flipped, the image shows up. So for that, what we're gonna do is, let's also add a bit of gap here, grid gap, Grid, gap, let's do two rem. Let's see how that looks. 
There we go, just separate them a little bit. Cool. So now what I want to do is just grab the back and we're going to add a background color of white to it. So background white. All right, that's still not going to show up as again, as you can see there on top of each other. Now I want to perfectly put them on top of each other. And the way we can do that is using position absolute. So on the back and face, we can add a position absolute and it's going to be relative to the card. So I think we need to create it here. Card. We're going to add a position relative to this. All right. So what this does again is we're just stacking them on top of each other. And that's it. Cool. So we got that sorted. And now to get that effect where we can stick the image on one side and the background on, on the other, we need to go on the card itself and add something called transform style preserve 3D, just like that. Okay. And now on the back, we need to add a back face visibility of hidden and that should do it. All right. So now when we rotate it, the image should be on one side and the background on the other. So if we let's, let's take a look here. Let's just experiment with it. Shall we? Um, believe we need to, let me take a quick look. Okay. So let's grab the card here and just add a transform to it and see if that works. So here, transform. And we're going to do a rotate Y of 45 degrees or so. Let's hit save and see. Okay. Still doesn't work. What I forgot to do is add a perspective. So for the 3D thing to work, you need to go all the way up to the section here and add a perspective and use 800 pixels. Now this is what I found to work the best. Uh, I'm going to show you a few examples of how it looks with different pixels. Uh, but yeah, see, that gives you a nice flipping effect. Let's add 90 here or so. There we go. And as you can see, the image is on the other side. Um, I can do a transition on this actually transition two seconds. Let's do transform two seconds ease. So we want to transition only to transform property for two seconds. Refresh. Okay. That doesn't work. Why don't you work? Hmm. Let's do all that. I don't think that's the issue, but I'm going to try it anyway. I think I need to change this actually for it to update save. So there we go. Let's do zero. There we go. And if I do 90 here, save. All right. So there's the flip. Let's do 180. There we go. All right. So that's the effect that we're looking for. Save. Let me change this back to zero. Meow. All right. So in the perspective here, if you do something like 200, it just looks different. It looks a bit wacky. There we go. See, so 800 looks quite cool. Save. So always, always never forget if you're doing this uh, perspective 3D thing. So the actual element should have pre uh, preserved 3D, uh, but the parent container should have this perspective thing on it. Otherwise it just won't work. Okay. So I'm not going to do the rotating here yet. So I'm just going to remove it and we're going to add it to a separate class. So let me just take a look here very quickly. We're just going to keep a, a transition all two seconds. That's fine. I'm not going to do an ease. I'm actually going to do a, cups, a custom one. So we're going to do a cubic bezier. Just copy paste after me because this one looks quite cool. 0 0.175 and then we'll do 0 0.885. 
0 0.32 and 1.275. Right, we're going to see. This, this one's going to look quite cool. Okay, so there we go. I'm also going to do a little box shadow on it. We're going to do RGBA 0, 0, 0, which is the color black. And then the last property here is going to be the opacity. Okay, and then here it's going to be X value. So where do you want the shadow to be moved? So on the X axis, I'm going to say zero. I'm just going to move it down. So the second property is the Y. So if you have a plus value, then it's going to go down. If you have a minus value, it's going to go up. And the last property here is going to be the blur. So I'm going to do something bigger like 15. So there we go. We have a nice little blur going on here. Cool. So that's that should be it. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. Yeah, I think that's that that should be it now. Now, one thing that I want to do is do a toggle. So we're going to create a toggle card here. And again, all I want to do is do a transform, rotate Y 180 degrees. All right. So in JavaScript, we're going to click on it and toggle it. Yay. All right. So let's go back to app.js. We're almost done there. All right. So after we do all of this appending crap, uh, we just grab the card and add an event listener on it. Add event listener. So every time we click on it, we want to run a function here. All right. So what I want to do is essentially just card dot class list dot toggle. And we're going to add this toggle card to it. There we go. That's how I named it. Yeah, toggle card. So let's see if that works. Click, 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 click. There we go. Look at that. Isn't that quite cool? Awesome. Perfect. So that works. <sighs> Now what I want to do is I want to check the cards basically if they match or if they don't. So we're going to create another function for that down here somewhere. Check cards. So it's going to be quite simple actually. We're going to do check cards. Set it equal to. So we have this function here. And we're going to see which card we clicked on. And the way we can get that information is Select card, I'm going to create a variable and set it equal to e.target. So when we click, the event is going to capture some data and target is going to be the element that we clicked on. So we can save that in here and we can just console log it out. Checked cards, uh, clicked card, my apologies. So clicked card and hit save. Okay. So now we have that saved. Now we need to run this check cards. Where do we want to run it? Well, every time we click on a card in here. So every time we toggle the card, we want to check the cards. And there we go. So let's take a look in console log, click. So we have an error. It says, cannot read properties of undefined reading target. So let's see what's going on there. Let's just console log out E and hit save, click. So we're getting undefined right now. Hmm. Oh, so what we need to do is actually pass down this event in there. So let's pass it down, check cards E and hit save. Click and there we go we get back the back, back. All right, so we're getting back the element, but I don't want this element. I want the card, right? I don't want the back of the card. So an easy way to fix that is to go to style.css and go here to where we have our face and our back and just add a pointer events of none. So it's unclickable, pointer events, none. Hit save. Do a refresh. Now, every time we click, it selects the card with the toggle card class on it. Awesome. That's super good. You know why it's super good? Because we can add a bunch of data to these elements. Right now, they don't have anything. It's just card. But what we can do is add the name, attach the name 
to the card. So we did it here where we generate our HTML. So let's go back there. And what we can do is right here, somewhere here, we can do cards. All right, so we're getting all the cards. Wait, is that correct? Um, okay, that's not the way to do it. We actually need to select them. So go up here before the for each and we'll just grab all the cards. So const cards equal to document dot query selector and we're gonna select all of them that have a card to it. Oh, and make sure it's query selector all here. All right, so we're grabbing all the cards. Oops, there we go. And in here, we can set for each card the randomly generated name from the card data from up here, all right? So not only we're attaching the image source, we're also attaching the name to it. So cards, and to access each individual one, we can add Besides the item here, we can add an index to it. All right, so cards index. So on each card, we can set the attribute. I'm just gonna call it name. And this, so this is anything we want here. We can name it anything we want. And the second uh, parameter is gonna be the actual data. So again, we're just gonna pull it from this object here, uh, which is gonna be item dot name all right so item dot image source for the image and item dot name uh, for the card details so now in the body here if we open up section okay something's erroring out let's see cannot read properties of set attribute okay so why is this erroring out const cards Let's see, randomize card generator. Okay, actually, my apologies. We, we don't need to do it this way. Let me get rid of this line. Uh, we have the card here, right? When we're generating it. So there's no point of grabbing it again. So let's get rid of this. Okay, my apologies. So. We're generating the card here, right? So create element div. We have the card, we add a class to it, and we can also add an attribute to it. So just card.set attribute, um, and then we can do name and comma, and do item dot uh, name, and that should do it. And hit save, all right? Then we don't need this index anymore to just simplify everything down, save. Okay, so let's take a look. There we go, elements, and look at that. So now we have a class with card and we also have the names attached to it. Awesome. Perfect, so now here when we click on a card, click, we're console logging out the card, perfect. So let's go back to VS Code. So that's our clicked card, that works. So uh, let's see, what do we need to do? Let's add a new class to this. So click card, class list. I'm just gonna add a class of flipped to it. All right, hit save. So now every time I click on one, flipped, flipped. So essentially what I want to do is flip two and then do a check. If they match, then good, keep them up. If they don't match, turn them back around. That's the idea. Whereas the other one, so the toggle card is specifically used for animation, right? So toggle card, but the flipped one is going to be used for a check that we're going to do right now. 
Okay, so I'm gonna add the flip there. And all we need to do is do an if statement. So logic is gonna go here. So all we need to do is say if flipped cards, I guess we need to select them as well. So besides adding the class, let's save them somewhere. Flipped cards, set this equal to document, query, selector, all, and we'll just get them from the DOM, flipped like that. Okay, so now if flipped cards, the length triple equals to two. So if we have two of them flipped, do something, do a check. So in here, we'll do another if statement, all right? So if, and all I'm gonna do is say flip card, cards zero dot get attribute name triple equals to flip cards one dot get attribute zero like that uh, one wait hold on get attribute name my apologies name like that I'm gonna explain what this does then we have a match console log match save okay so what does this do well every time we click on an element we add the flipped class to it right so click we add the flipped click we add the flipped now while we add that we also save it in the flipped cards and in here what we do is we just check the first one we clicked and the second one we clicked and check if the names match if the names match then it's correct else so if they don't then we're losing so let's see where is that if statement formatted in such a weird way that's odd so he, down here we can do an else statement else console log wrong okay so a problem we have now is we click on this and we click on this and then we get wrong only on the third one so a fix for that is we need to add the class here of flipped before we grab the actual elements so i'm just going to cut this and move it up so every time we click on it we add the flipped and then we're getting the actual elements all right so hit save all right so let's try it out one and then when we click again wrong okay so that is correct boom so that's wrong now i'm not sure if i'm ever gonna get a hit here i did look match so our logic works here all right so just to clarify again uh, every time we click on something we add a flipped class to it and then we're doing a check here if we have we compare the first and two elements if the names match then we have a match if they don't match then it's wrong and we go into the else statement Okay, so that works. Now, what we also need to do is, uh, basically, if we hit a match, uh, we need to remove the flipped from it, okay? Um, and even here, actually, even if we're wrong or if we're right, we need to remove the flipped. So, just so we can click on two other elements and re-add them. So, uh, let's just do that now so let's go here to the wrong first and all I'm gonna do is get all the flipped cards like that and do a for each so I'm gonna loop over them we're gonna have an access to the card in here I'm gonna grab each card class list and just remove the flipped on them like that and hit save so let's take a look at elements here so click on the first one, so we have flipped. When we click on the second one, boom, they get removed. All right, so that's the logic behind it. Now we also need to do the animation. So we can do card dot class list, remove toggle card and hit save. All right, so click, click. Now, as you can see, as soon as I click it, this one starts flipping back. So to solve this animation issue, we can just cut this out and add a little set timeout to it. Set timeout, we're gonna run a function here. 
paste the card classless remove and just add a delay of 1000 milliseconds, all right? Just so, because the logic hits instantly, right? And the code runs instantly, but we want to delay it, delay the animation. So click, click, so it flips, and then the animation actually goes into effect. So again, just to clarify again, the flipped here is only used for this comparison to see if the first one and the second one match or they don't. All right, so click, click. And that's all. Cool. So we have the logic going on here. Now, if they do match, so up here, we're gonna create the same thing, flipped cards for each card, like that. Card class list, we're just gonna remove the flipped, like that. And what I wanna do now is, I don't wanna remove the animation back again, right? I wanna keep them up facing up. So we're not going to remove the toggle card anymore, but I don't want them to be clicked anymore. So I'm just going to remove the flipped and then make the card style pointer events, pointer events equal to none. So it's unclickable. So let's give it a shot. So click. So if it's wrong, they flip back. They flip back. Let's see if we can get a correct one here. Okay, I'll just keep a look at, where was the, there we go. So if they match, we don't remove the toggle anymore and we just add pointer events, none to it. So now I cannot click on them anymore like that. Perfect. And now we can just keep going because remember every time we're wrong, we remove the flipped and if, if we're correct as well, we remove the flipped. So we can just keep going. Now we have infinite lives so far, but look at that, boom. It does work. Where was it? There it was. Perfect. Okay. So that's kind of about it here, to be honest. There's not much left to do besides um yeah adding a life and resetting it so what we can do is after this logic here so after the else statement actually i believe this needs to go inside the else statement yes it does so after we run the set timeout and after this for each loop here what we can do is player lives minus minus and then we can also update player lives count text content equal to player lives. So basically every time we're wrong, take one off from the lives and update the UI. So click, click. So when we're wrong, it doesn't work. We have an error. Assignment to constant variable. Okay, so let's go up here and change this to let because cons, you cannot modify the actual value. There we go, so five, four, three. Now, again, if we're correct, it should work fine. Let me just find, there we go, see? It doesn't take away a life. Perfect, now, it, nothing's gonna happen when this is gonna hit zero, so we're gonna need to create, actually, a new function that resets everything for us. So let's just go here and create a restart, restart gonna be quite simple. We're gonna create a const restart. Set this equal to an arrow function. And again, so to, to restart the game, we'll just get the card data again, card data, randomize it again, randomize like that. Uh, we're gonna get the faces of the cards, document.query selector, all face, and then we're also going to get the cards document query selector all and get the cards like that and i'm going to get the card data do a loop over it we're going to have the item and index in here need to add the parentheses so for each 
item and index. We're going to run a function. So what I want to do is if we lose the game, I want to get all the cards. I'm going to say cards index like that. So loop over each card and remove the class list toggle card. All right. So if we lose, flip all the cards back to their original position. That's all I want to do there. So let's see if that works. So when do I want to run this restart? Well, here we need to do a check basically. So we're going to say, it's going to be super simple. We're just going to say if player lives triple equals zero, then just restart the game like that. All right. So let's click, click. Okay, let's get one correct there. Click, 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 click. And when we see when we lose, it, uh, all the cards go back, toggle back. That's all the logic we have now here. Now we need more. Uh, what we also wanna do is reset the player lives. So I don't think we need to do that in the loop, so outside of the loop here, we can do player lives equals to six again, and update the UI again. So player lives text content equal to player lives. So here's the error, player lives count. So that's the actual HTML element that we need to update. Player lives count, set it equal to six, now it should work. So let's go through this again, boom, 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 boom. There we go, and when we lose, boom, they flip back, everything resets to six, so that's awesome. So after we do that, as you can see, we still have them in the same position. So what we need to do is also randomize them because we don't want to play it like this, right? And we know the Blink-182 is here, and then, well, we cannot even click it anymore, to be honest, because we remo we removed the pointer events on it. It's still recognized as it's facing up. Remember, we're only turning the animation, but the pointer events are still disabled on it. So we need to do a couple of things here in the for each loop. So let's go in here. And what we need to do is... Uh, set back the pointer events to all. So we need to randomize here, okay? We need to get the cards index like that and do style pointer events set that equal to all. So again, remember, if we guess correctly, we're we are removing the pointer events on them like that, so now they're not clickable anymore. But when the game reset, the pointer events were still removed. So we're just adding them back now. So if we click here, boom, it flips back, but we can click on them again and win the game like that. All right, cool, so that works. Now what we need to do is also randomize these. So when we lose, boom, switch back. Here, what we need to do is uh, do faces so we get the faces index dot source and set that equal to item dot image source so again we're getting back a randomized version every time we restart the game here so hit save there was a cool light shining in my eye um, I'm blind okay so now we update the image as well so click 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 all right so we see those two Let's see, do they randomize? Go through these and boom, boom. So as you can see, it did update. So that's cool. Now we also need to update the, let's click on the first one here. See, we also need to update the name of it because this one's Metallica and it says Fleetwood here. So that's not okay. So besides updating the image, remember we also have to update the name. So grab the cards index and we have to set the attribute of 
name and update it to the new randomized name. And that should do it now. So save. Okay, so we have Led Zeppelin here. Cool. Go through all of them. And now, there we go. Cool. Now everything still matches. So Blink 182 should be here. It works. Awesome. So, yeah, that's pretty much everything we got going there works. I guess the weird thing is when we lose, we still get to see a bit of the, we get to see the images here, right? So, boom. I know it's Blink-182 now here. So we can delay that animation as well. Uh, so we have, let's see what we have here. So we add the pointer events back and we change the image and set the attribute. So when we're randomizing it, let's delay this by like a second or so. Uh, we can do a set timeout like that and paste everything in here and just add a delay of like a second. So let's wait for all the cards to flip back and then randomize it. So hit save. There we go. So, so that bugged out. Let's refresh. There we go. So we got that. So now we wait for the animation and boom, then it updates. There we go. Awesome. So we got that going. Now we got that little bug uh, that we can fix very easily. What we can do is whilst the cards are flipping back, and the game's restarting, we're not able to click on anything here on the screen. So what we can do is just go up here and when the game restarts, I'm gonna grab the section style pointer events and just disable everything, add none. So nothing is clickable until the game completely resets. And here in the set timeout, just add it back. So section style pointer events and set it equal to all, and that should do it. Cool. Click, 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 click. We have one matching there. All right. That's not matching, that's not matching, and boom. Reset, and now we can click again. So there's a bit of a time where we cannot click on anything. Okay. Cool. Awesome, so that works. Uh, now what we can also do is set the little alert. Uh, hey, you won the game. Hey, you lost the game. So for that, let's go here to the restart and add a little timeout. Set timeout, we're gonna add a bit of timeout to this as well. Just run an arrow function that gives a window without alert. I'm just going to add text in here with a 100 millisecond delay. And I'm going to go up here to the restart and add that text parameter because we want to modify it. Because even when we win the game, we still want to restart it, but with a different message. So have that in there. And now we can go here when we lose the game. Uh, we can just add a message like, like this. Let me copy paste this over. Try again, okay, like that. And when we win, we can add a different one. So how do we check if we won the game? Well, after all of this big logic here, so click on the first if statement, here we can run a check to see if we won the game. So we can just do if toggle card. So remember the toggle card remains on it so if we click like that, see, toggle card remains. So we can just check, hey, if all the cards are toggle cards, so if the length is 16, basically all of them are correct, uh, then we won. So if toggle card the length, length triple equals 16, then I'm just gonna copy this over saying restart, but we won and hit save. All right, let's play our little game. I think that should be it. Click, 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 click. So 
Let's lose it first. One and boom. There we go. Try again. Now we can do a little trick here and just take a look at the HTML. So Blink 182 is with the last one. How am I losing with the HTML pulled up? <sighs> it doesn't work. No. <laughs> All of that energy wasted. Okay, we have an error actually. Let's go to console log. Oh goodness sake, toggle card is not defined. Oh Jesus, okay. Where's where's the error coming from? 93. Oh, where is that? 93. Toggle card here. Oh, I don't think we have it selected. That's why it's not working. Okay, so we can just go up here uh here all right where we select flip cards let's just do const toggle card document query selector all toggle card and that should do it now okay here we go again all right joy division where is it uh with the last one so this with this lovely and then we have Metallica, there we go. Oh, no, it was this one all along. Blink, with Blink, these two, Led Zeppelin here and Led Zeppelin there. All right, I should be able to win now. There we go. There we go. Oops. There we go. And win. And you won. And everything resets. So that's awesome. All right, there we go. That should be it. That should be all the logic. Hopefully this was quite simple. Um, it's mostly the data section here that takes up quite a bit. And there's quite a few ways of doing this. I just found working with the DOM elements and adding the flip to it. I thought that was quite easy. Um, yeah, I think that's quite, quite simple. Um, I guess one thing that we could update is the cards are not facing correctly here, the images. We could just grab them face and just transform and rotate them Y by minus 180 degrees. So the artwork actually looks correct like that. Okay, there we go. That makes it look much better. But yeah, that's about it. Oof, long tutorial, but hopefully you learned a thing or two. So thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Check out the courses below on HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and React. And there's a new one coming very, very soon. And until next time, bye-bye.